I hope that everybody here is for the Brian Azzarello Spotlight. This is Brian Azzarello. I am your host, Paul Story. I also write some stuff, but not as much stuff as Brian. Um, do you want to start right away? We want to wait for the on the dot? No, go ahead. We're here. Okay. Um, I, I what thought do you guys I, want to talk about? Yeah, really. <laughs> I want to ask, I, right off the bat, I want to ask, you're originally from Cleveland, right? Yeah. You, Bendis, uh, Siegel and Schuster, Andrako, Zoller, what is with Blonde, Cleveland? Blonde, too. Oh, yeah. Is it is it the water? Is it the Lake Erie water? It must be. I don't know. It's You know, you could say that, right, that's Cleveland, but let's talk New York. You can go even bigger. Well, that's true. That's true. But nobody, like everybody thinks of New York as, as a comic book town. But I, I, I just uh, was, was refreshing myself with your Wikipedia. Oh, that's very uh, accurate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I hosted a, a panel a couple of years ago and I asked the guy, oh, you know, I noticed this, uh, the, I saw on the internet you did this. He's like, no. <laughs> How about this thing? No. Um, but uh, now, were you writing at all before you moved from Cleveland to uh, Chicago? Mm -hmm. Not. You mean comics? No. 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 Not were you at doing all. prose mostly? Yeah, I was actually writing when it was in Cleveland. After I got out of school, I, was, I wrote industrial video. Really? Yeah. I have some friends who did voiceover for industrial videos. Well, maybe they used my words. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure the. the now, hard hard boiled industrial videos. What are those like? Film noir, industrial yeah. videos. Yeah. <coughs> so I mean, it was yeah, it was a silly job. Yeah. Most job guys. So, and then now this you, one's the silliest. You you start <laughs> off with prose, then you did. You were a line editor at the revived Kamiko. That is so. That's inaccurate. Okay. That's what it says. Okay. But I didn't call. I was not the man. They just like it, it was a that was a zoo man that place. Well, it wasn't a zoo. I was like I was working for a, a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Sunday morning or a Sunday afternoon panel. You hear all the good stuff on the Sunday. Yeah. Afternoon. Oh my God, that that was just like that guy was something else. Yeah. So, um, and then uh, there was I believe the name was. Jill Thompson inter introduced you to somebody at uh, at DC, Lou Stappas? I knew Lou before that. Oh, okay. Yeah. That I see. I got my bad information again. Yeah. What but I knew Lou. I knew Lou from he uh, was a, an editor at uh, Trouser Press and um, this magazine called Reflex, which was like a skater music kind of lifestyle okay. magazine. So that's how I was familiar with him yeah. through that. And and I mean I heard he's pretty legendary. Lou? Yeah. yeah. Lou was was legendary. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a that's a hell of a way to start out in comics, working with you know top top editorials. Yeah. Kind of people and. <clears throat> yeah, we like got the f first thing that I pitched to him. He he, he he'd come to Vertigo from. Like I said, I think it was I think it was right after Reflex that they hired him, and um, at the time, as he put it, like Vertigo was all fairies and elves and shit, and <laughs> he was not a fan of it, and and he didn't like all this interconnected stuff, and he said like uh, he he um, offered me Phantom Stranger, and it's like oh, I don't know what I'd do with that guy. What's that guy do? He, yeah, he pretty much goes around being in a cloak and a fedora. <coughs> yeah, yeah. And, and he said, like, just you know, give me, give me your take on it. Don't put anybody else in it. I don't want any of this interconnected stuff. Yeah. And I, so I came back with him for with the story. It was about a twelve. It was a year long story, and everybody else was in it. Yeah. And he was just like, this is exactly what I told you not to do, and I love it. <laughs> That is great to hear. And, but it, you know, Karen didn't love it. Oh, 
Not so great. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't remember your no. know, Stranger series. But that was, okay, when that, that <coughs> we got it to like the 11th hour, and then she killed it right at the end. Right? Mm -hmm. She wouldn't let it just get over the, the finish line. And, and it was because I was new, and because I was, without saying it, it was because I was American. Yeah. Because at the time, everybody was, that was when Vertigo was, just like everybody was doing it was from Great Britain. So I was going to say, so you can blame Neil, Jenkins, uh, Jamie Grant, Guano, yeah, yeah, Jamie, Grant, Garth, yeah. Let's not, right. not forget about Garth. Um, now what did he do? <laughs> He's got a TV show, two of them. Yeah. Um, so when that happened, Axel was, Axel Alonzo was uh, Lou's assistant mm -hmm. at the time. And he was just like, um, uh, he, he was really disappointed that it didn't happen, and, he's, and, and he was like, you know, I don't know how we can break in new talent if, you know, she says, we want new talent, mm -hmm. and, but then when we bring your new talent, it's no. Yeah. So we need to do something. And so that's when Axel, Axel's idea and Lou's was to create the, um, the anthology, mm -hmm. where he's, he's like, you know, I can break in new talent that way. Yeah. So like my first job at Vertigo was uh, Weird War Tales. Mm -hmm. And then... Gangland? I don't know if it was a Gangland or Heartthrob that was next. I, I don't know. But it was like they did all these anthology titles. Yeah. And he was putting me in all, in, in all of them. And then he, uh, he got um, promoted. When Lou got sick. Customer, I actually got promoted, and uh, he sent me um, Human Target as a character and Johnny Double. Mm -hmm. um, Human Target was something he was real hot on, and it was much more um, recognizable character. Right. You know? Right. He sent it to me and said, "Send send me those two and those. Like, I want you to pitch me these." Okay, because you're probably not going to get human target. Yeah. But do it anyway. Just write me a pitch. Yeah. It'll help. It'll help you in the long run. And then this other, I'm throwing in this other character who was like, he appeared in one issue of Showcase in like 1968 mm -hmm. or something. And I like that character better than human target anyway. So <coughs> human target I didn't get, but I did get uh, Johnny, Johnny Double. Double. Yeah. That was a good series. Thanks. Yeah. I do. Not, not that I. Looking back over the stuff I've read, I don't think you've had really a bad series. Thank you. Yeah. By the way, I'm curious. How many know Brian from his Vertigo work? Okay. And how many from his superhero stuff? So about half and half. And I, I was just curious because, like, I always think of you as the hundred bullets guy. I mean, that's where you sort of I think that's move my doors out most people. And, yeah. Always. But but then you you know switch over. I remember us talking at, at Chicago about uh, when you got the Superman gig with Jim Lee, and, uh, and it was sort of like yeah yeah <laughs> like that. You you I remember you feeling kind of like this is not my usual cup of tea, right? Or but that was I mean I got that when Jim was finishing Hush, yeah. And he called me and said, like, I want to do Superman. <coughs> Have a good time. And he's like, oh, no, you're going to write it. I'm like, what? Are you sure? Yeah. yeah. He's like, I really want to work with you, and you're going to write Superman. I'm like, but I don't have a Superman story. He's like, I don't think of one. And you did. And I did. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, has anybody got? OK. I got a question. Right Please, here. Uh, Hundred bullets going to be made into a movie or something? Who knows? <laughs> you know, I mean, it, I, Netflix hasn't approached you about the hundred hundred bullets streaming. Uh, no, uh, no. Right now, it, it's you know, it's it's in its sixth option. It's not option six times. Right now, New Line has it, and they want to make a film. No. We'll see. You know. Yeah. I, I think it should be on TV, but whatever. What, 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 nobody cares about it. <laughs> and, you know, but, Will you be writing the script, though? No. 
I don't even really know if I want to. You know? I'd want to have some sort of involvement, just like, yeah. but I don't know if I want to write a script for, for that. I already wrote it, you know? <laughs> hey, question. Um, for the Luther Man of Steel series, mm -hmm. what idea kind of like first come to your favorite uh, figure? Because out of all the comics, that was definitely very interesting, like the perspective of Luther, how he sees Superman and all that stuff. Just like a vinyl with, you, with your artist you worked with. It's definitely really interesting. So I'm just kind of curious, like, where that idea yeah, kind of came about. Where the idea came from? Boy, that was a while ago. Uh, I know where it came from. All right, I was having, it was in, it was in Chicago at a Wizard World show. Dan DiDio had just, this was a lot, long time ago, he had just come to DC. And at the time, Lee and I were, uh, we'd finished Batman Deathblow, which was the first thing we worked on together. And um, DC was going to give Wildstorm some DC characters to use in their universe. Um, and they'd asked us what we wanted. Or, yeah, Jim's like, well, you, do you want to do one? Sure. What do you want to do? And we talked about it, and then we were going to, we, we wanted Olmec. Oh, yeah. 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 And then at the Chicago, I had a meeting with Dan. And Dan was like, you know, he, he wanted us on something big. Mm -hmm. He said, what do you want to do Olmec for? I said, like, well, Olmec's kind of, he's got a mohawk, he's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and he kicks ass. Yeah. And, um, Plus, we, we both were like, uh, let's, you know, we wanted to do like one of those stories set in the future, like, like create something. I think Lee, Lee eventually did create the future that we were going to use in OMAC in um, Suicide. Mm -hmm. that, he, that he did for Vertigo. I think it was similar to what we were doing. Um, not exactly the same. Anyway, so Dan's like, you know, I want you to do something big. Want, you know, big. Take, take somebody big. And I'm like, hey, uh, like who? He was like, well, why don't you guys do Superman? I'm like, I don't want to do Superman. They keep coming back to you. Yeah. It's like, I'll do, what about Lex Luthor? And he's like, yes, you can do Lex Luthor. Yeah. That's how that happened. And then it was like, what am I going to do with Lex Luthor? It's like, ah, you know what? I'm going to make him a good guy. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to be, I want, I'm going to make him somebody whose motivations you understand. I mean, yes, by the end of that series, you see that he's despicable. But along the way, he's like, he's, he's kind of right. So. Any, any more, or shall I start peppering Brian with my own questions? Okay. So, um, a lot of different writers have interpreted Batman. Uh, what is your Batman? What, what, what drives him, you know, apart from just the standard stuff, if anything? My Batman. Hmm. He's a tragic figure, I think. I don't. I don't think that necessarily that's um, mine alone. I think every time that I've done a Batman story, I've sort of approached him from a different angle. Like, I think. Uh, I think it, like Batman Deathblow. He was sort of like James Bond in Gotham City. You know, um, in the Broken City I did with the, Eduardo, he was, that was like the cape was just a trench coat. I mean, he was a private detective pretty much, you know. It's just, I, you know, I look for different things to say about him. Um, I don't think, I'm, I don't have it in me to write him on a, like for a long time, a monthly basis. For me, he works real well, just like go in, tell the story and get out. The whole, the whole Batman family soap opera element of it is lost on me. You know? I think he, he worked like I don't even Robin doesn't work for me. You know? I think he just works better when he's like torturing himself. What about the Thomas Wayne Batman? Any plans to explore that? No, I did that one already. Yeah, no. 
that was, um, why didn't anybody think of that before? You know, that's a <laughs> no shit moment. What do we need? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dan wanted us to keep doing it. He's like, oh, yeah. we want you to continue the series. Mm -hmm. And they're like, right, it's done. <laughs> There's nothing to say anymore. Uh, red shirt and then we'll move over. Yeah, um, I read some of your Western stuff, the love list I like a lot. Thanks. Um, I really got into your take with Chang on Wonder Woman, the myths, and God, and all I guess that was a really lengthy run. Yeah. And, and a lot of people don't have really lengthy runs on Wonder Woman and mainstream DC stuff. Was the plan for that run to be that long? Did, did, did you expect it? And, and, and how did you take Wonder Woman into that round that you took her in? Um, yes, I planned to have it that long. When I uh, gave him the outline, it's like, here, it's going to take three, probably three years. Um, sign off on it, and I'll do it. Which was great, because since, you know, a lot of those books crossed over and all that stuff, and I didn't cross over at all because I had it all mapped out for me. And I said, like, she's going to be here at the end of the first year, here at the end of the second year, here at the end of the third year, and then you can give it to somebody else. I think you need some water. Yeah. Okay. And what, one thing I'm kind of curious about is uh, when I think of your work, particularly like 100 Bullets, there's like really striking panels that have always stuck with me, uh, kind of visual reveals. I think one was like in the hard eight, like what Dizzy was like under the table. Like I just remember how that was. When you're working with an artist, is that something you really script? Uh, do you use a really full script or like in a collaboration like that? Or are you just saying this is what happens and allow them to kind of take the reins? Um, with Eduardo, well, we've been working together forever. It's, I hate writing art direction. I just hate it. <laughs> so my art direction is very sparse. Um, but I do break it down panel to panel. So it's in there. Um, he has a lot of, Eduardo brings a lot of his own ideas to the script, which I am like totally fine with. You know, a lot of stuff that happens in the background, um, just throws that in himself. In the Hard Eight in particular, I didn't call for a parade going through the streets in New Orleans, but he put it in there. And he kept like going back and forth from where the just talking heads to what's going on in the back. It, it's always great when they when when the artist puts in the stuff that you would kind of be uncomfortable asking for. Do this huge crowd scene. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, well, you know, that I'll say, yeah, yeah. do it, but um, you know, this is a collaborative yeah. medium, which is great. That's what's great about it. And you know, I I trust my artist. You know, I don't. But I think that's why I'm able to work with really good guys over and over again because they like working on my script. Because they give me so much freedom. You know, to do. They're not my hands. I was, uh, you mentioned Loveless, and I, one of the things that strikes me is there's, uh, you're very kind of steeped in hard boiled noir sort of stuff. That's always been my impression. Yeah. Like you, fiction that you, you read. And there's this sort of a, a strong connection between at least like some styles of Western and the whole like private eye, hard boiled, uh, you know. It's almost a modern cowboy, you know, the American mytho mythological cowboy, mm -hmm. gunslinger. And, like, do you think of that when you're going back and doing Western? Do you think, you know, are you conscious of that, or do, is that just a natural aspect of the kind of the American lone hero tradition? Um, I think, let's see, Loveless. I did. Um El Diablo, which was a miniseries, uh, and that was what I'm doing. Is like, wow, this is this is um, this is a noir story. This is uh, and, it's, uh, and it's a western. It's like I want to do more of this. It's like I want to take those two genres 
put the room together, and see what happens. So that's what Lobos Lo came out of that. It's like, can, can I tell, can I tell a, a noirish story, but it's you know in the West, or, and you might be seeing more of that too. Oh. You heard it here first. You heard it here. <laughs> it's been um, optioned by Warner for TV. Again, part of the arrow. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't you know? Don't hold your breath. If you see it advertised, that's why I always say, if you see it advertised on the side of a bus, then you're going to... There you go. So, yeah. Are there any characters or players in like DC, for example, that you haven't written yet that you'd like to get around to someday? No. Because they don't approach it that way. It's, it's more... Um, it's who I'm working with rather than what I'm working on. If somebody says, I don't want to work, you know, I meet somebody and we want to work together, it's, it's more like, okay, let's, you know, what are you thinking about? So we're not seeing the Robin Tough Egg to Crack no. series coming up. No. <laughs> How'd you meet Miller? Frank? He wanted to meet me. Which is... <laughs> <laughs> um, it was when maybe 100 Bullets had been out for a year, and he was familiar with it. And Bob Shrek, who was his friend and editor for on a lot of the things that he did. I knew Bob, and Bob said, Frank wants to meet you. It was in San Diego. It, it, um, it, it was the, it was the, maybe it was like two years it was out because it was, the same San Diego that I met Eduardo for the first time. And Eduardo and I had been working together three times, three years before we met each other. Yeah. Comics is a weird biz sometimes. It's, it's yeah. fun. You know? yeah. Oh, by the way, I should I should throw this in. Isn't Trish Multihill the best? She's the best. Because Trish would probably, you know, if I, I failed to uh, bring up the stellar work she did, she's probably going to give me a hard time. Yeah, she's the best. She's. Uh, She's done. You had no, she a, did 100 you bullets. Had such a stellar team on that book. On 100 bullets? Yeah. 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 And she was, you know, Grant Golish colored the first few, Excellent. and then Trish. Um, Trish got the job because you know, Grant was this. He was too slow. There were video games that he had to play. So he had to get, you know, it's like we can't wait around on this thing. And so, and I don't think Eduardo really liked his coloring. Mm. So Trish had done, she colored Marcelo Frusen in one of the anthology stories. Mm -hmm. And Marcelo was Eduardo's assistant. And so Eduardo saw it and he goes, I want that color. So oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I was lucky enough to give Trish a sorbet in the midst of 100 bullet bullets, she colored Gotham Girls for me. Oh. Very, very different kind of flavor to it. So, because <coughs> otherwise I'm just going to start. Okay. One, one um, so at, at your noir panel uh, yesterday, you mentioned you you always think of the end before mm -hmm. you start going. So that shows you know you have a lot of detail in mind when you're when you're writing your stories. On uh, stuff that you do on your own or wherever the uh, the big two companies have given you the opportunity, do you have an artist in mind already as as you're as you're writing your story? I don't start anything without having an artist already anymore. That's that's the best way. That's the best. So. Uh, on your Hellblazer run, the uh, the issues that you did with Richard Corbin, mm -hmm. was that something uh, that you sought out, or is that something that was arranged for you, or how did that come to be? That was uh, that was met Axel and I. I think Axel was uh, well. I I got Hellblazer because Warren quit. Um, Warren Ellis. They told that story that he did that was... I think that was a gun violence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, well, because it, it was, I think it was, was it Columbine? I, they all sort of blend together now, don't they? Um, I forget what happened. It was some school shooting. And Warren had done a story 
a Hellblazer story that eventually did get published. Yeah, uh, the annual or anthology or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the DC said, no, nah, you know what, this is too close right yeah. now. So they, they weren't going to publish, they said we're not going to publish it. And he's like, well, I quit. And Axel called me, and we'd been, we'd been talking about Hellblazer, John, for a while, and, and, and Axel was of the, of the mind that he should be written by somebody British because he's, he's so quintessentially British. Yeah. Um, and then he called me and says, like, uh, I, need to, I need somebody to write Hellblazer. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not British. And he says, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I changed my mind. And, um, <laughs> Cleveland is like Britain. Yes, it is. It's dreary. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I said, like, well, I don't know anything about London either. And it's like, so don't put him in London. It's like, I, I, Axel's like, I think, I think you should, uh, let's go globe hopping. Let's go all over the world with, with all these supernatural things. I'm like, oh, all right. He goes, but I need to know by tomorrow if you're going to do it because I need to get somebody to write this book because it's, I can't, it, you know, he quit. So I thought about it. It's like, globe hopping. I'm like, oh, man. It's a lot of research. It'd be better just to keep him in one place. A place you can't get out of. Prison. <laughs> <laughs> and so I called Axel and it's like, uh, yeah, I want to put him in prison. And he's like, okay, that's great. Let's do it. And then and then Axel said, I've been talking with Richard Corbin. And I said, Richard Corbin doing something in prison would be pretty rad. <laughs> So he um, he said yes. We ended up working three times together. I think yes, three times. We did Hellblazer. Then we did a book called Two Things for Marvel: um, Banner and Luke Cage, mm -hmm. or just Cage. Is there ever a story that you've written that you like uh, you publish it just used to put out? Or What's that? No, no. They put out pretty much anything I give them. What's that like? <laughs> <laughs> it's been interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask about how you felt as an American writing a British character, because for a long time I thought you were British too, with your run on Hellblazer. I, I wrote. Wonder Woman. You know, you're not a great <laughs> Yeah, it's like just come up with a voice. You know. So I felt fine. I felt it, at the time, and there was like there was a lot of blowback because I was the first American writer. Some people were angry about that, and that just made me, you know, like. Bleh. <laughs> I was going to say, you haven't ever run into any kind of controversy with any of your books, right? No, none. Yeah, really it's just it's like, you know, right down the middle, Main Street. <laughs> I, I, now, not to take attention off you, but I've known you for 15 years or so now. Yeah, probably. You used to catch up with Brian and Collins, and you have never struck me. Every time I see something in the comics press, oh no, this is going on, I'm like, yeah, Brian doesn't care. You know, he's doing his story. And it, I mean, that's, it, there are people who get very worked up if, if there's any kind of blowback. And you always struck me as somebody who's like got a solid enough vision that you're like, nope, I'm good. Yeah. Like you say, if, if they don't like it. Yeah, I, I, I hope people, I, I hope everybody doesn't like it. <laughs> I'm, I do an an uh, anthology called Pablum. Yeah, well, yes. it's like I, like I said this the other day, the sweet spot for me is 50% people loving it and 50% hating it. That's like perfect, if I can get that. Because I'm getting conversation about what I'm doing. And that's that's what's really good, yeah. you know? Well, it's like the, the, yeah. It's, you want emotion. I do. Yeah. No, no, Crickets is the worst. Yeah. As opposed to like writing 
you know, a novel or a movie or something like that? Oh, um, well, you got to think sequentially, you know, um, which is, I mean, I've, I've read some scripts from uh, screenwriters that are from the comics, and they have no clue about pacing for the most part. Um, you know, how many panels on a page, you know, that a panel shows one action, you know, you can't have somebody walk into a room and light a cigarette. <laughs> He's going to be in the room lighting the cigarette or, you know. Yeah. So it's like you got to think in image, image like that. The way I write a script is I tend to write all the dialogue first, and then I break it down. The conversations are what you you're yes, first. Yes, because I think that the I think that the dialogue, for me, has to carry the story. You know, that's only only part of the your work that shows up on the page that actually interacts with the reader directly. Right. I mean, you know. Panel descriptions, that's for the artist. Mm -hmm. The the back and forth, that's that's for the reader. Yeah. yeah. I, I also tell people like like read Hemingway. Hemingway's the guy if you want to write comics, because he says a lot with very few words. I think there's nothing there, there's nothing that like makes me put a comic book down quicker than word balloons all over a page. It's like ah. Oh. That poor artist. Why'd you do that to him? <laughs> yeah. are, now, are any of your scripts available online somewhere? They must be. I, I was going to say at brianazzarello.com. No, I don't have that. <laughs> no. um, I would. I, I don't know. I don't put them out there. Usually, when when they, I think they've been published in like some of the collections. Yeah. You know, yeah. some of the absolute stuff. It's like embarrassing. It's like, oh my god, people must think of it. Ripping them off because there's so few words on them. <laughs> Rips. Hey, I, I knew a guy once who said that uh, a silent script meant the writer didn't really didn't really write. I was like, you oh, that's understand. that's way harder. Yeah, <laughs> like you don't understand how the how a comic book works then. But yeah. but there are comic scripts out online. Those are useful to get an idea of the feel for for what you're doing because it's not a it's not a movie script. It's not a no. prose story. It's yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Are you? Uh, are you there's been, I did this debate online in comic shops and stuff in the past 15, 20 years about like the single issue serials going away. It's going to be trades. All TV movies are taking over, and other people are like, we've had this debate forever. It's still going to be there. The fans are going to be there. So, in that pendulum, are you an alarmist? Do you see change? I mean, what, do you just stay no, out of the conversation? You know what? I, I do stay out of the conversation, yeah. um, but <coughs> it's been like that forever. You know, the direct market has been collapsing since I started writing comics. <laughs> and before that, it was the it previous thing was collapsing, which brought the direct market. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's no. The sky's, the sky's not falling. Yeah. Comics have been dying since the 50s. Yeah. Yeah, that's, you know. Uh, I mean, meanwhile, you've, you've got more, there's more comics being published now than ever before. There's too many. Plus, you've got everything on the web with people doing good, bad, and indifferent stuff there. I mean, the volume is almost yeah, impossible to keep up with. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, which is... I mean, it's good because it's a lot of different viewpoints, and it's bad because there's too much and you can't get to everything, and a lot of it you shouldn't even be getting to because it's being done by people that really aren't ready to be doing it, but they're doing it anyway because you can do it now. So, I mean, there's a lot of, which is cool because that's real punk rock, but <coughs> hone your, there's some things that you need to hone your craft in. Because things aren't curated like they should be, said the old man. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, you, you wouldn't want, like, your, the very first script you ever wrote, you wouldn't necessarily want somebody, you know, out there going like, hey, let me dissect this. No. Yeah. But, but it, it happens, so yeah. I can't worry about that.
that so. What do you like doing in your downtime where you feel like you're always working and always planning for your next? You know, I was thinking about that recently and I'm always working. Always. But it's like, I think that just comes with um, working in a creative field. You're always like, you're always on, yeah. When you travel, when you travel outside the country, do you feel you get more inspiration doing those travels? Do you feel you're better in one place where you're... No, I, traveling's fine. I love it. Gives you more ideas. Yeah, I, I can work in a hotel, no problem. Right. I've People been working here this... Yeah. 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 I, I was going to throw in a question about his work for animation. Does anybody want to hear that? Yeah. Okay. So, and what are the challenges of doing that and transitioning from uh, the very personal, I feel, to comics is a very personal aspect as opposed to working animation. It seems like it's, it's a bigger machine. Hmm. I could be entirely wrong. They took the script and, it, and then that was done. There you go. <laughs> so it was, it was actually... Um, it's it, the the difference was it was not collaborative, even though there were so many more people working on it. Mm -hmm. You know, I wrote this. I wrote the the, the the script, sent it in. Notes came back. Um, fixed it, and they and then they said, "Well, we're going to take a crack at this." And I was like, "No, let me fix this." No, 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 don't worry about it. And yeah. and then. Nine months later, it's like, here, here's a DVD. I'm like, oh, shit. It's like, you did it. And then I watched it, I'm like, that's that's my script. There you go. Yeah. It's like, so they didn't change things that they said they were going to change. How much, how much editorial interference do you get? Apparently not enough. <laughs> <laughs> Although I, I think your your popularity and your sales would say otherwise. I don't get a lot of interference. I yeah. don't get any interference. Yeah. Okay. Until well, yeah. until I I I, I, uh, I think there'll be some interference in my future. <laughs> <laughs> don't the directors call? What director? Um, the animation directors. They don't they don't call for advice or something. They just take it and plow through it. Yeah, those guys are pros. You know, they they know what they're doing. That's and they work so fast. In the one, the first thing I did in animation was um, what the hell was that called? Gotham Knights or Gotham Knights? Yes. Is that what it was called? Um, Dark Knights or something? Yeah. I forget. Um, it was a bunch of short stories. It was it was actually one story, but it was a bunch of short stories and. It was put out to coincide, I think, with was it the third Dark Knight or the second? I don't. Remember. I think it was. The, I think it was the Dark Knight, which was the second. One. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and that was. I got a call from. Uh, man, who was who was behind that one? Uh, anyway, Jonathan Nolan. I, I ended up talking to him. Who was Christopher Nolan's brother? Co-wrote the, the screenplays, and they're like. We're doing this. We want to involve you. I like what you do. Um, are you interested? It's like you got to give me like twelve minutes. I think it was something like that. Mm. And here's the chapters. We're going to do this, 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 this. And what does any of this interest you? Like, oh yeah, I think that I like to do the flashback thing. That, that might be fun. Um, and. Uh, and he said, okay, great. We need it next week. Oh. <laughs> and I woke up. And at the time, I was in, I was on vacation. It was, well, it wasn't really vacation. It was one of those, like, traveling vacations. Mm -hmm. Like, I was in a, I was at a show in Mantova in Italy. And then I, the following week, I was in Barcelona for the, that show there. Yeah. And... I spent that week. I didn't see that Barcelona has a, had a nice hotel. <laughs> <laughs> you get like the the little shot outside your window, and it's like, oh, yeah, I can like, see that on TV. Walking to the yeah, yeah. walking to the convention, like, 
doing what I had to do there, and then back and doing the script and getting it done. You, you run into that with like, in a lot of shows, you feel like, oh, I know this city, and then you realize, I don't really know this city, I've just been there a lot of times and not done anything there. Well, now I, like, I make sure, I pad these trips, Yeah. you know? Like, I'm not leaving Baltimore until Tuesday morning. Okay. Because I want a day just to hang around. Take the wire tour. Take the wire tour. <laughs> So, so uh, you know, geeks, we, we all think a certain way, so, so there's always been a certain amount of uh, deconstruction and criticism in, in the community, but in your decades, you know, doing, doing these comics, have you seen the reaction to controversy change? I mean, obviously, comics are more mainstream to the point where that Batman panel was on, you know, Colbert and the late night shows and stuff, but... In general, have you seen a change, or has it always been the same way and it's just magnified now? Well, there's more um, outlets, you know, and information is disseminated like really fast. <laughs> you you don't have to send a letter to the editor. Yeah. You know. I mean that that just blew up in a day. Like Wednesday morning was very different than Wednesday night. <laughs> We were not trying to create a pop culture event, but we did. And I wish DC would, would be reacting differently. Did you ask to be put on the Black Label as the first issue or the first series, or did they ask you? They, no, we were, we were, I think, always meant to be the first one. Okay. Yeah. Um, Black Label kind of spun out of uh, Joker, the book that Lee and I did. Because yeah. um, when that was when that came out, it was really successful, better than they thought it was going to do. And, and so there was talk about we should do this on a regular basis, you know, with these with these you know, slightly, you know, skew them a little bit, a little bit adult, that kind of stuff. And at the time, everybody was calling it Jokerverse at DC. Yeah. <laughs> it's called the Joker. You know, that was while they were that was a you know, working title. It was a, the, just a placeholder. And at the, t the the people who were what, what happened? Why didn't we go ahead with that? I don't know. It took it took a long time, but then here we are. And now everybody knows what Black Label is. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope DC takes advantage of this. I think right now it's, it's there's they're being very short sighted. Did you always intend Constantine to be the narrator, or was that? Um, was no, I didn't always. But when I thought of it, and I ran it past Lee, and so like, Lee, I think I'm going to have John narrate this. And he's like, you know, yes, yes. It's like you know that changes everything. It's like that makes it a very different Batman story. Because most of these Batman stories, you know, it's like, it's all narrated by him. Yeah. You know? So I thought, like, having John talk about Batman, Bruce Wayne, what drives him, it's like, that's a really interesting take. It's fun to write John again. It really is. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, one sec. Just, just wanted. No? Yeah, okay, we're going back. Sorry, I didn't mean No, that's no weird. Um, so, so continuing with the black, the black label, um, and I, I don't know, remember if Marvel's adult label is still active or not, but Max, 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 yeah. Uh, so, you know, uh, comic book fans are growing up. What do you see as the the extra space that you get by having an adult an adult label where you you can kind of do different things for the older readers? I thought it was good. <laughs> I, you know, I think. I think it's a it's a good it's a good idea and it's like it's going to look Joker's coming out, that's gonna be R. Right? And Deadpool is R. You know, there's there's you can do this stuff for adults and it should be done. I mean when they said you know I asked Dan Didio, I said, what are what are how far can I go? 
I said, what are you, you know, what are you really looking for? He said, I don't know. I don't know. I said, like, I said, like, like HBO. He said, yes, HBO, that's perfect, because that's what I'm going to tell everybody. You go, like, that's how far you can go, like an HBO series. Apparently not. Because every once in a while. Well, yeah. Apparently not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, every once in a while. Now, I don't know, like, at DC, but sometimes people so say, you know, oh, I want it to be, you know, a real mature reader's thing, and they mean a couple of F-bombs. Yeah. You know, it's like, that's... Well, that's... A, yes. Yeah. Um, and... Or, or a decapitation, or some, you know, the... Oh, decapitation's <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You can shoot Nightwing in the head. You can have Wally West go postal. But you can't. We have, a, we have an interesting society. Yes, we do. Oh, my yeah. God. I was in Glasgow at a, at a show last week. To quote the president, they're laughing at us. <laughs> They just, they couldn't believe the, the, what's going on over this. I, I, my, my dad came from Scotland. I'm so proud of that country <laughs> and their reaction with them. But, I mean, Lee was over, um, Lee lives in Italy, and he's friends with Milo Minara. So he was over at Minara's this past week, and Minara was just like, he said he was just like cackling and laughing. <laughs> And, and going back to the f bombs, Batman doesn't swear. You know, when I was writing it, it's like you know, that's like my default word. And I put it in a. It was, and it's like, wait a minute, he doesn't say that. It's like that just doesn't sound right coming out of his mouth. John says it, but. Yeah. <laughs> so it's in the book, but it's not Batman saying yeah. it. just doesn't ring true yeah. for me. I'm sure he's going to say it in somebody's book. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it, you know, actually, you know, right, so is it Nightwing or Robin? Who, who gets to say it? Is it in that Titans? Oh, it's, well, he's still Robin. <laughs> he's still Robin? Yeah. Still Robin says, fuck Batman? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we've already got a pitch in for one for next year. Sugar and Spike? <laughs> yeah, they're old and they live in a nursing home, but they're still chasing each other. <laughs> Pardon me? No, voice actor for Berlin Ryder. No, it's not in it's here. Not here. Oh, where is it? I don't know. I don't know. It's probably one of the other panel rooms. Sorry. So like, uh, a voice acting question. Yeah. <laughs> Several, if that's okay. Um, <clears throat> with uh, Cage, the uh, the Max book that you did, mm -hmm. I think that's kind of like it's it's a gem that I feel like more people should know about. When you see like the stuff that's been drawn, or have you seen the stuff that's kind of been drawn from that over the past few years? I think like a lot of the work that you put into that book has been like extrapolated into the TV show, the the new books. Uh, do you get any sort of validation from that, or is that something you just kind of say, I, I've done what I've done, and I've just moved on? It's, yeah, I say I've done what I've done, you know. And it's it's I I haven't watched the TV show. Do you have a hard time kind of like following a book that, or a book or reinterpretation of a character that you've worked on? That like once you've worked on it, is it hard to check out other people's versions? Um, I intentionally don't mm -hmm. for a while, just because um, I don't want to know, because I don't want to have an opinion about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because usually, like, it, it happened one woman, certainly. It was like, you know, have, you know, have you read da 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 da? What do you think? It's like, nope, I haven't read it, so I don't know. It's just better for, for everybody if I don't know. I know nothing. 
Well, the great, great thing now is if someday, somewhere down the line you want to check out their collections. Yeah. Yeah. You know, ten probably, years from now. Yeah. yeah. I'll probably never write her again, but I don't. Yeah. Is that because you f feel you said everything you want to say about Wonder Woman, or? Nah. Back to the. I went back. I hate that. It's just like the wrong. That's the wrong direction. You know. Always go forward. If you if you if you're gonna allow change, leave the change. If you if you. Well, keep changing. Yeah. Don't. I mean, like, keep changing. Don't go back. No. You know. Don't just push reset. That's just, yeah. That's just not my. That's, you know. I, I all those. Those, um, like the George Perez stories, which are great, and but I didn't want to write the George Perez stories because George Perez already did it. You know, it's just like do something new. Well, we we actually still have about eight ten minutes, so you know, keep them coming. Anybody new? Well, I I'll sit and and pester him sure. for the rest. <laughs> it's not pestering, so. I guess that's what I'm supposed to be doing, isn't yeah. it? Well, no, I mean, this has been good so far. I'm yeah. enjoying myself. <clears throat> uh, is there, uh, I, I, do you ever uh, do prose work anymore? Do no, you? I don't have the time. Yeah. So is that something down the line that you'd like to, if you, if you funny, get that big. Funny uh, enough, I yeah. was thinking about, I've been thinking about that this week, huh? you know? It's like, it's the hell with comics, I don't need this. <laughs> what was there something in particular that happened? <laughs> nah, yeah. It's just a culmination. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's it's. Uh, they often say, like academics in comics, the the uh, the arguments and the the strife is so big because the stakes are so low. <laughs> you know, like everybody's sort of like really clawing on for their little their little piece and sometimes with that cordial their little fiefdom and so and fans can get very possessive of stuff yes they can um, I've yes part of anybody any of the characters I've worked on the um, Wonder Woman fans are the most intense mm. there is a right way and there is a right way to do Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's Brian's way. Yeah. What's the, I don't think I don't think my way. I, don't, I got some shit going back with that. That's that's good. There was yeah. some Amazon stuff that wasn't too. People weren't very happy. But uh, whatever. Yeah. You know, all this stuff. It's just like it's comics. If you don't like it, there's other ones. Yeah. And and kind of like a. Kind of like a bus. There's a new version coming along. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not. It's not like you're going to be on. You know, like uh, Stan and Jack. Oh, I'll be on a hundred issues. You know, or of, of like a regular superhero title. Yeah. You know, it just doesn't really happen that much anymore. So. Well, they did not want us to leave one of them, but we got through the yeah, story. Did that we did work with you. Yeah. Way through. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we got through the story that we wanted to tell, and I was like, you know what? Time to go. No. Uh, is there any character that you uh, wanted to write and have any kind of chance to work on? No. I can't think of one. What the question? More about it. <laughs> <laughs> no. <clears throat> no, that, um, mm -hmm. not the question. I don't think I'll ever write the question. Uh, other than that, oh, sorry. Was there another? Oh. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, what kind of story? You mean like the? No, well, in general, like. I think Southern Bastards is great. Okay, I think Jason's. Jason's just good, man. That guy's always on the top of his game. Yeah. Everybody always asks about influences. I want to, like, just who are some of, like, say your your favorite writers? Not not necessarily that you think 
you know, informed your voice, but just that you love to read for its own sake. Mm, you mean like comic writers? I actually, I was thinking prose, but comics too. Okay. Um, man, comic writers. It's okay, you can say that I'm, you know, one of your prime numbers. <laughs> Don't write like that. I was going to get to you. Right after Frank Miller. Yeah. And, uh, yeah Frank definitely. Uh, Alan Moore. I'm trying to, like, yeah, I think Peter Milligan's great. Yeah. I love some And of he his ended stuff. up doing uh, Human Target. Yes, he did. Oh. The funny thing about, let's go back to that story. Okay, Peter got Human Target with, um, what was his name? Eddie Bukovic. He was a great, great Croatian artist to test away. And so Johnny Double gets approved. Time to pick an artist. Axel says, I'm going to send you, this is a fact, this is, we were using fax machines. <laughs> it's like a papery email. Yes. It said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to send you faxes in, of three different guys. Pick one. Hang up the phone because you have to hang up the phone. You use the fax machine. <laughs> turn on your yeah. turn on the fax machine. And out comes uh, Eduardo was the first one to come. The only one I ever saw. I still don't know who the other two guys were. Yeah. <coughs> so, but what was coming through were Eduardo's sample pages from Human Target. Uh. So we both didn't get the gig, but we got the backup. Uh. <laughs> And so a fantastic creative team was born. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I, I envy you that. I've, I've worked with a lot of great artists, <coughs> but I've never hit that person where we kind of come back again and again and, and hit it out of the park. Yeah, we That's have a, a real... baseball reference, right. I think. I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not good with this. Baseball, what a day. Yeah. Oh God. The Cubs are tied with the Mariners. I mean, the, the Brewers. One game left. <laughs> from Chicago these yeah. days, in case you didn't know that. Yeah. Brian had tickets to today's game, too. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Do you, I mean, do you think Chicago informs your work, or do you think yeah, you gravitated to Chicago because that was sort of... No, I gravitated towards Chicago because it was like, well, I'm going to move to New York or Chicago or L.A. Uh, Chicago's close and it's cheaper. Yeah. So, so I went there. I went to L.A. I did not last long. They've been trying to get me to move out there, and it's just not, it's not for me. Yeah. You know, I go out there, you know, uh, four or five times a year, but I'm not a... I, I like it better visit, to visit. If it's, you know, I go out and visit friends. Take me to... Yeah. That's what I call it. It's actually just visiting friends, but I say I take me. Why not? Yeah. That's what you put on your uh, taxes, right? Yeah. <laughs> Unless any of you are IRS agents, in which case, yeah. Yeah, yeah I okay. Donnie Cates, too. I like what yeah. he does. Okay. Jason, Donnie, I think uh, Alice Cott, I think is his name. Oh, yeah. That guy's pretty good, too. I like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's enough. And then pros, I always go back to Jim Thompson, David Goodis, Ernest Hemingway, um, Chandler, you know, just all the usual stuff. Yeah. Now, Hammett El Elmore, Elmore, Elmore Leonard's yeah. westerns are great. Yeah. Uh, what would what, you say? I was saying Hammett, Chandler. Chandler it's, it, I find hard-boiled guys tend to lean one way or the other. No, I think uh, Hammett is a more, is a better writer, mm. um, more, he knows how to write, yeah. and he really knows how to write, yeah. I think, uh, but I love Chandler's stories, and I love what he came up with, and yeah. Chandler sort of created the whole sort of, the, the quick, disposable, noir, yeah. you know, crime, crime novel stuff. I tend to like the crime books, like like I said, Jim Thompson or, or uh, David, David Goodness I love. 
I guess his books are like they're kind of existential noir. I like that stuff. Like the like a lot of the fun. Yeah. I actually sometimes get the uh, get a little picky when people are like, oh, this book or that comic is noir. Like, it's really more hard boiled. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's the visual sensibilities of, of the films that, like, aren't necessarily translated into prose. Yeah. But I'm probably being a jerk. No. I mean, like, uh, Mickey Spillane's hard boiled. Yeah. Mean, that's not yeah. Fun. yeah. They're not interchangeable. No, they're not. I mean, like I said at the at the noir panel, the character in a, in a really good noir story, the character is in a worse place than they were at the beginning of the story. Yeah, yeah. By the end. Yeah. If, yes, if you beaten the bad guy and rescued the girl or guy or whoever, it's then you're not. That's not no, wrong. you can beat the bad guy and rescue the girl and still. So long, yeah, so long as so you're, long in, a as you're in a yeah. worse place. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, do we have one last question? No. So, what's your favorite thing I've ever read? Got the girls. Oh, there we go. So, all right. I, I, we're, they're not rushing us out. So, if you want to hang for a bit. And if anybody comes up with anything, um, otherwise, uh, thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks. This is fun.